this video, I'm going to walk you through Chester Zoo. I'm going to go through all the animals I saw there and give you my general thoughts and opinions about the zoo. Located three miles out from Chester city centre, it is home to over 20,000 animals. It's also the zoo that features on the show The Secret of Life of the Zoo, which takes you behind the scenes to show you how all the animals are taken care of there. Firstly, as, as you walk in the entrance, you'll see the, the elephant enclosure on your left. Uh, these weren't out yet, so we didn't see those till later in the day. The first place we decided to go was right to walk down towards the, the black rhino. As you walk towards the black rhino, you'll, on your left you'll see a big netted area which has different types of ducks in there. There's about eight different species. And on the, on the other side of the net, there's a, a little bird watcher's cabin. It has a telescope in there so you can get a much better view of it. But then as you continue along down the path, you'll start to come across the outdoor enclosure for the rhinos. Since we went in you know the middle of January, it was quite cold, so most of the animals were inside. Luckily, Chester is very good for viewing the animals when they're inside. A lot of the enclosures are quite well done, so like, the animals have lots of room and they can go inside, but you can also see them. As you go in towards the rhino, you'll see a, a big sort of roundhouse area, and you walk in the door, and then the rhinos are really, really close to you in there. We were also lucky that both the rhinos are on their feet. Uh, the one on the right did just stand in the corner staring us out for the, the whole time we were there, but the one on the left was walking around, so it was nice to see them up. After we left the rhino, we decided to go north up to the area of the park, which they called the islands. Uh, it was an area that was themed off of Indonesia, and it has a lot of the different animals from that region. I was quite impressed with all the theming around here, which really made it a lot more interesting to walk through rather than just like plain and then the enclosures. They also had this, or well, they usually have this boat tour that will go around the river in the island. But in January, because it's the quietest time of the year, they close it. So unfortunately, we won't be able to. We weren't able to go on that. As you first get into the islands area, there's sort of like a mini mini lake and a bar. So I think it's like a place just to grab some food quickly. But then as you continue to walk around the path, you'll start to see the enclosures. A lot of these. The animals in these enclosures weren't out because it was too cold, but we did catch a glimpse of some of them. Again, the theming was all really good as you continue to walk around. As you come towards the top of the of the islands area, that's where you find the Sumatran tiger. This is the smallest of the tiger species and they have uh, two at Chester. Unfortunately, we, we didn't get much of a view of them. We did catch one of them in the back, but they didn't really come out much of their house, so I couldn't get any film of it. As you come out of the tiger enclosure, you come towards the Malayan tapir. Uh, we got a really good view of this as they have three large windows there and she was right next to one of them. We were also lucky to see the baby that's only a couple months old. Uh, this is great to see as they are an endangered species. As you continue along the path, you come into the first bear enclosure they have. Uh, this is for the sun bear, which is the smallest bear in the world. It and it shares its enclosure with bear cats as well. We had quite a good view of this. It was one of those two there. One of them was in the indoor bit, uh, throwing a stick around as the two bear cats sat in their little boxes looking down at him. They also do have a big outdoor area. As you continue out of the sun bear enclosure, you'll walk past the outside area for the orangutans. You walk through uh, a heated area which has a few different animals in it. Firstly, they had the, the rhinoceros hornbill on the right. Then as you continue on, you come into the viewing platform for the Sum Sumatran orangutans and the gibbons. All of these were quite active within their houses, which was really good to see. And then most of the Sumatran orangutans were active. I think it was only really the male who didn't move much. He was the one who was hiding in the, the little bridge to the outside area. But we did see the young ones fighting in the corner and the female ones were sitting on the ledge. In the area where you view the orangutans and the gibbons, there's also a few smaller enclosures for like, various bugs and snakes. There was a tarantula there as well. As you come out of the viewing area for the orangutans, you come into another heated open area. Um, this one has a lot of different birds flying around with you. It was again, very well themed. And as you continue along the path, you go past some smaller enclosures and then another larger monkey enclosure. Continuing down the path then, you go through a cave tunnel and come out at the bottom where they have some crocodiles and some tortoise. I'm not sure if they're technically crocodiles. They were 
called something else. I'm not sure if they're like a subspecies or they're just a completely different species altogether. They were very good to see. Uh, there was two in the enclosure along with a bunch of fish and some like smaller sea turtles as well. The final little enclosure in, in this indoor area was a tortoise enclosure. Uh, they were about medium sized tortoises. And then you had a few other uh, smaller birds walking around the floor as you came to the exit. As you came out the building, you sort of came back to where you start where, with the islands. So it's just one big loopy path around. Uh, there's a few other smaller enclosures. Again, we didn't really see anything out in these though. Uh, next, um, after coming out of the islands, we decided to go right. The next enclosure we saw was the, the capybaras and the anteater. The anteater wasn't out, but there was plenty of capybaras out. And then on the opposite side of the path to the capybaras was the second bear enclosure. Uh, this was an Andean bear. I think they had two there, but we did only see the one. Um, it's still quite a small bear, it's definitely bigger than the sun bear, but not one of the bigger bears. This is the one that's nicknamed the spectacle bear as well. As you continue down this path, you'll come to another tapir enclosure. Uh, these, one, these ones aren't quite as big as the Malayan tapir, but they were still pretty big. Uh, we did have a good view of those through the window. Uh, they were both just sleeping in the house. As you continue down the path, you can choose to go right and go through the bat walkthrough. Um, probably not for everyone, but I would definitely recommend. There was absolutely loads in there. All you could hear was the fluttering, and they do come quite close to you. A couple did go in front of me. 100% um, recommend if, if that's something you want to do. Uh, once we went past that, we went right to then go across the wooden bridge to get to the other side of the park, or zoo. <laughs> Uh, this bridge took you over a few enclosures. Um, the first one was a deer enclosure, so we caught a glimpse of some of those. And then as you got towards the end, there was the African dog enclosure. These were very active, so it was really good to see. African wild dogs have an 80% hunting success rate due to their teamwork, which is much higher than, say, a lion, which can have an up to 30% success rate. As you come off the bridge, you come into the next area. Uh, there's some smaller uh, enclosures first, uh, things like owls like smaller birds and then as you turn right and go round you'll come across the cheetahs unfortunately we didn't manage to see those uh, we waited for a bit but they didn't want to come out of their house as you continue around the corner you'll come across the red panda enclosure uh, we did manage to see one of them up in the tree i'm not sure how many were in this enclosure specifically later in the area with where there's the bornean orangutans there's also another red panda enclosure in which we saw another one. As you continue down you'll walk past some smaller enclosures that have lots of different birds in them. As you continue along the path you start to come towards the penguins and the giant otters. Um, before we got to those we went into the mini aquarium area. This was the usual kind of aquarium thing, there was lots of like bright and colourful fish. Uh, they're all quite small in this one. After leaving the mini aquarium bit we went to see the Humboldt penguins. These have a really big enclosure and they were all really active when we got there, so that was really good to see. After the penguins, we went to see the giant otters. Uh, these didn't come out much, but we were lucky enough to catch a glimpse of one of the adult ones jumping off the rock. I believe there's two adults there and two children. And then after that, we walked around the flamingo cage. Uh, there was absolutely loads of flamingos um, all walking around with their heads held really, really high. After going past the flamingos, we went into the Komodo dragon house. So it was just an inside place that was obviously heated for them. Inside, there was some other smaller enclosures with things like smaller tortoise. But then you come around to the big room and they placed the heater right by a window. So the Komodo dragon was right up by it, which was really, really good to see. I'm not sure how many they have there. It might just be the one. Either way, we got a really, really good view of it, which was really good. We then continued to go south towards the giraffes. Luckily enough, they were all outside of their their house when we got there. There are a couple that have only just recently been born. You could definitely see the smaller ones. There was one hiding underneath the, uh, the little ledge coming out from the roof. Uh, you can also walk through their house too. So even if they're inside, you'd be able to see them. And then as you walk through the house, you go through the Ocopee enclosure as well. Uh, this was another really cool animal to see. It's like the mix of a giraffe and a zebra. It's the giraffe's closest relative. Uh, a lot bigger in person than I was expecting, so definitely a really good one to see. Once we came out of the Ocopee enclosure, we continued on towards the Jaguar enclosure. Firstly, when you get into there, there's 
a big open room where they have uh, some bush dogs, which just continue to run around in circle. There's also some smaller enclosures, one had a tarantula in it, and then a sloth, which was just hanging upside down from the roof, walking around. You then continue to go into the next part of the building, which is where the Jaguar was. Uh, we were really lucky with this. We got a really good view of it as it walked through the enclosure. This is definitely one of the coolest big cats I've seen. It was a lot bigger than I was expecting and it's a lot more uncommon. So really lucky on that one. After you come out of the Jaguar building, you continue towards the Bornean Orangutan building. This was another quite well themed area. There are also some smaller enclosures with things like snakes in there as well. Then as you continue through the building, you get the viewing place for the Bornean Orangutans. There's also uh, some gibbons around there as well. The male was out with these orangutans, so we had quite a good view of that. Uh, definitely quite different in appearance to the, the female orangutans. They have a lot of fat around their head, which I think is used for echoing their voice. Uh, this is also the building where the other red panda was. Uh, we only saw the one again in this enclosure. I'm not sure if there's more than one in this enclosure. The next place we went to after the orangutans was the chimpanzees. Uh, they have a massive outdoor area. Since it was quite cold outside, they were all in their house. After we went through the chimp area, we continued to go south towards the lions. There was a few other enclosures we walked past. For example, there was a goat enclosure. If you keep following the path, you get to the lions, which are at the end. Uh, they have a massive enclosure, but luckily enough, they were all quite close to us. So we had a really good view of them. Uh, there was two female and one male. They have this massive area at the bottom of the park. But these are Asiatic lions, so they're not quite as big as African lions, but they were still really good to see. As you leave the lions, you have to go back the same way and then turn right, and you come towards the elephant enclosure. There was, feed, I think it was a bit of a mini feeding time or something, so they actually come outside, so we were quite lucky to see that. We did then go back at the end of the day to see the uh, indoor enclosure. Um, they have quite a few elephants there, maybe like seven or eight. Uh, quite a few young ones as well, so they were all really good to see. There's also a few other smaller animals in the enclosure. Mainly you have a really good view of the elephants, which is really good. The only other enclosures that we quickly went to before we left was there was a monkey house that had some spider monkeys maybe and, and some mandrills in it, so they were really good to see. And then there was the other rhino they have, which is a either greater or a lesser one-horned rhino. Uh, not fully sure on the differences between that and the eastern black but again really good to see that concludes everything that was there if you've made it this far thank you for watching i hope this helps you decide on whether you go to chester or not i definitely recommend it to anyone there's quite a lot there and it we were there probably about six hours and we managed to see everything in quite good timing and if you like the video leave a like and uh bye